the agreement that we had, we were going to do this who's prettier thing, right? I'm pretty right. Paul Roma. Uh, we did this little skit where, you know, I get upset with him because the girls are, they want him and not me, you know, and all that. Yeah. Um, so we sat back and we said, we want you to go around with this guy and teach him. We think he's going to be a real good asset for the company. Um, and I said, okay, so, but, you know, so we're going to lead it up to a pay-per-view. Yeah. I said, but we have the understanding that I'm not going to do a job on, on pay-per-view. And absolutely not. In all the house shows, put them over. And then when we get the pay-per-view, it's not going to happen. I was like, cool. I'm good with it. So that was our understanding. Uh, when I got to the show that day, I saw where we are on the board and, you know, where the names were. And normally the, where you're on one side of the board or the other, um, it usually tells you who's going over, right? So I looked on the board and I just said, hey, Rick, what do you want? How do you want this to go? And he says, uh, well, they want him over. And I said, excuse me? And they said, they want, they want him over. I said, what are you talking about? I said, we had an agreement that I didn't have to do the job on, on pay-per-view. I said, you know, he goes, well, the, the, the office, it came down from the office. He goes, well, the, it's changed. I said, what do you mean it's changed? He said, well, the office wants it this way. I said, oh, the office wants it this way. Cause I didn't believe him. Yeah. I, I figured it was coming right from him. So as I walked through the curtain, I said some words, which was, this is all about respect, Ruby. Now, Ruby is short for Rubicaba. And he is Maria Elias, who was, a, who was a referee. Okay. So he knew I was addressing him and talking only to him. Nobody else would have known that because I'm the only one who calls him Ruby. Um, so when I got in the ring, I did what I needed to do to keep what I figured be strong. It had nothing. It wasn't personal against Alex Wright. You know, I saw his podcast. I listened to it. Um, they had asked him a question and I get it. Every, you know, everybody's got an ego, you know, to some degree. Um, and, and I understand he was protecting himself. And he said something about, they asked him if, you know, he had his way with you, but could you have stopped it? Could you have prevented it? And he said, yes. Well, again, you know, not tip for tat, but that's what it sounds like right now. That wasn't going to happen. Okay. Nobody's going to have their way with me. It's just the way that it was. You know, I was just that person. So we did our thing. He went along with the program. <clears throat> Excuse me. I kicked out on two and a half. And obviously they got the three count for the, for the belt. I went into the locker room. People were telling me what a great match it was. One of the office personnel, uh, Paul Orndorff said, what a great match. I got home. I received the letter from FedEx. I read it. It basically said, finish out your bookings. We don't longer need your service. Well, about the time I, I read it, I got a phone call and it was Rick. And he's like, hey, what's going on? I said, nothing. He goes, hey, so uh, you don't want to wrestle anymore? Just like that. And I went, what are you talking about? And he said, well, you know, I just, I don't think you want to wrestle anymore. I said, why would you say that? He goes, well, that match you had. I said, what about the match I had? What Alex Wright I said, it was a good match. He goes, well, that's your opinion. I said, no, that's a lot of people's opinion that I had a great match with Alex Wright. She goes, well, you know, that basically, if that's what you think. I said, well, again, that's what everybody thinks. He goes, well, I don't think so. I said, well, I rightly don't give a fuck what you think. What else you got? 